Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show you a couple real fast ways to fix color cast. Of course this can happen anytime you're shooting anything indoors with flash or not flash, especially sometimes with flash a couple things could happen. One, the, the flash bouncing off of the ceiling or something could hit the hardwood floor or some other things and throw a cast all over the place, but a lot of times too this can be a white balance issue. By the way, look a few videos back on how this could be caused by triggers uh, that have that smart intelligence that are fooling the camera and you'll see also another uh, problem with that and how you can fix that with your triggers but this anyways is a Photoshop fix not really specifically geared to that but just color cast in general no matter what you're shooting now you won't need any of my books from my real estate photography series for this particular tutorial if though you are interested in that I have a link to that in the description for this video so without further ado let's jump into it and talk about some of the color cast fixes that you can use for your interior real estate photography. Ready to get started? Let's go. So here I have loaded up in Photoshop already the three typical layers that you do for uh, some type of flash ambient blending, what I talk about throughout my photography series. So we've got our ambient layer that would be on top, and that's just doing the 50-50 approach where it's 50% opacity and luminosity mode, and then a window pull. But if we take a close look, we can see the colors don't look quite right. And you could think, well, I could adjust some of that maybe by clicking around on some white stuff with the uh, white balance dropper in Lightroom, or or also possibly using a curves layer for a white balance fix by using a dropper there. But let's go down to the flash layer and take a look at what's really going on. So obviously down here, especially on the bottom, we can see that there's something not quite right um, that's down here on the, uh, on the baseboard. It's very orange, getting a lot of orange tint, some green stuff coming through. And there really wasn't anything here necessarily casting colors from the flash, but it definitely somehow got off. And this is where it's very important to try to to finesse that two-stop rule that I talk about. That way you really don't stress the calculations coming out of the camera from the lack of any type of ambient light coming into the room. Anyways, it's that uh, happy balance. Let's go to one of the fixes first. The first one I'd like to show you is a new one and it's based off of the curves layer and a friend of mine out in the UK, his name's Colin Barton. He's with Barton Fleming, they're a big agency out there in Oxfordshire and uh, he sent me this along. I really want to share it with you and then I'm going to show a second one as well. So anyways, let's just turn, we've got now just the flash layer on. Either way that you're doing it, make sure that you have the flash layer selected. Then what you want to do is you want to put an adjustment layer, a curves layer. So you go up to the layer menu and you say new adjustment layer and what you want from there is a curves layer. Now you can name it anything you want, it doesn't really matter. This is where the fun part comes in. You go up to the little hamburger over here, this little menu item that's over here on the very corner, and in there, there's a selection for auto options. Select that. Now when you do, you immediately see the color started to recuperate itself. What it did was, it did an auto color correction based off of these options here. Now there's different ones to choose from. I have it here in this case, enhance per channel contrast selected and also snap neutral midtones. There's other ones in here you could play around with. See, that might be a little bit better. Uh, this one seems to be a little bit more natural um, and you could play around, find which one you like. Once you do, you just click OK, you're done. So now if we take a look without that curves layer, it was this with the curves layer at this. When we put it all together, being right above the flash layer, you can see it then improved from being a very uh, orangish looking uh, wall and the tub being off to then something like this. Okay, and this is before we apply any of the bumps to it, any of the, the final presets. This is just for color right now. So let's go back and take a look at the second approach. And by the way, if this is going a little bit fast, feel free to just hit pause, rewind a little bit, and take a look. So the second option I've talked about before, I've got it in the books on the uh, image adjustment to color matchment. So what we're going to do here is just duplicate the flash layer. I like to do it with Control J, many different ways to do it by right clicking on it. But you can see I've got a copy of it here now. Now what we want to do is go up to the image menu, we want to go to adjustments, and we want to go to match color. What that'll do is that'll bring up this dialog, and in that dialog there's a little checkbox called neutralize. Check that. 
When you do, you can see that a lot of those colors were already then corrected. It saw that there was some type of non-neutral cast, so it neutralized it. So this won't work very well if there really isn't a color cast, because it's gonna take into effect a calculation based off the assumption of cast. So anyways, there we go, we can put that in there. So if we were to turn that off and on compared to the curves layer adjustment, we can see there's just minor differences, but they do look very much similar. So a lot of ways you can do that. By the way, if at any time this seems to be brightening or darkening the image too much, then what you can do is instead of having like your curves layer in normal mode, you can put it in color mode. And that way only the colors would be affected. We can see that here without it in color mode, it brightened it up a little bit from the curves. And then here we made maintain the luminosity that we liked so much. That can be very important when, especially we're doing our flash ambient blending, and we wanna make sure that we have the luminosity that we're after, not necessarily one that the, uh, here in normal mode, that the curves layer thought needed to be adjusted because of the color. So small differences here, sometimes it can be pretty stark. Anyways, those are the two options. Once again, you either have a curves layer, and you can see some of the adjustments that it did here by taking out some of the red, the green, a across the proper areas of the tonal curve. And that's why you can see those lines are different. This is very different than using, uh, for instance, a saturation layer and trying to paint that on. This is taking into consideration the colors across the tonal range so that in the brights and in the darks, the colors are corrected properly. Image color match does something just a little bit different. And of course, that's just working with colors, not necessarily across the entire tonal range, but very close and similar to it. So anyways, two quick options there for you. have color I recommend putting these into an action. For instance, I have an action here that I make. I do control shift F6 and boom, I've got my uh, curves layer there. If that doesn't work, then I just use another action to do uh, that image adjustment color match. Too much adjustment for you, just change the opacity of that curves layer or the image adjustment of the, the, the match layer too. So you can just change the adjustment for how much of that correction that you wanna have in place. So that's all there really is to it for changing the color cast uh, on an image. A couple different ways you can do it. Once again, these are issues you'll inevitably come across at some point doing interior real estate photography and using auto white balance, even if you were to try to set it to manual and go through all the pains of doing that and try to find the balance for that with all the various lighting mixed with the flash, what a pain, you'd still have some type of cast occurring at some point uh, along the way. So anyways, this is a very quick fix for it. I wanted to also touch on something just real quick, I'm getting a lot of requests for uh, tutorials based off of virtual tours and using, for instance, the Theta Z1, or in this case, you can see I've got some stuff strewn out here of work that I'm doing with DSLRs doing 360 panos for virtual tours, which is a very high quality way of doing it. It's been done for years. There's some simplified ways of doing it, and I'm even incorporating flash along with that so you can get stunning results, uh, especially the outside views using window pulls. It's a little bit different lighting than what you do for normal interior photography, but I'm working on the final touches of that. I'm starting to provide it for my clients and I'll be providing you with some tutorials and more information on that, hopefully in the coming weeks, as soon as I get a break from and By the way, if you're looking for portable 360 cameras, the Theta Z1 is supposed to be available by the end of May 2020, probably early June. Right now, everybody's sold out. If you're thinking about buying something cheaper like the Insta360 ONE X, that's been discontinued. Now people are price gouging twice the amount for it. It's not a camera worth even considering. I have uh, tested, by the way, the KuCam 8K. Eh, it's decent. It's a real pain to try to work with, but it does produce images that are almost as good as a Theta Z1. It's only about half the cost. But quite honestly, I would tell you to hold off for a little while. If you can't find a Theta Z1, you're in a hurry to do virtual tours, and I'll have some information on doing stunning ones doing a DSLR approach. Anyways, I hope this particular tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.